Hi friends, I welcome you all here at TNV Academy. Let us discuss the clause 9, performance evaluation of the standard. Let me begin with the clause 9.1, monitoring, measurement, analysis and evaluation. The subclause 9.1.1 general states that the organization must determine what needs to be monitored and measured, the methods for monitoring, measurement, analysis and evaluation as applicable to ensure valid results, when the monitoring and measuring shall be performed, when the results from monitoring and measurement shall be analyzed and evaluated, and who shall analyze and evaluate the results from monitoring and measurement. Clause 9.1.1 says that the organization is required to retain appropriate documented information as evidence of the results. The organization must also evaluate the performance and the effectiveness of the FSMS. Coming to Clause 9.1.2 Analysis and Evaluation This clause 9.1.2 of ISO 22000 specifies that the organization is required to analyze and evaluate appropriate data and information arising from monitoring and measurement, including the results of verification activities related to PRPs, the hazard control plan, and the internal external audits. Subclause 9.1.2 states that the analysis must be carried out to confirm that the overall performance of the system meets the planned arrangements and the FSMS requirements established by the organization. According to this subclause, the analysis must be carried out to identify the need for updating or improving the FSMS and to identify trends which indicate a higher incidence of potentially unsafe products or process failures. The subclause 9.1.2 says that the organization is required to carry out the analysis to establish information for planning of the internal audit program related to the status and importance of areas to be audited. Further, the subclause 9.1.2 specifies that analysis must be carried out to provide evidence that corrections and corrective actions are effective. Subclause 9.1.2 specifies that the results of the analysis and the resulting activities must be retained as documented information. The results must be reported to top management and used as input to the management review and the updating of the food safety management system. Lastly, this standard guides and says under a note that the methods to analyze data can include statistical techniques. Let us talk about the subclause 9.2, internal audit. The subclause 9.2.1 internal audit states that the organization is required to conduct internal audits at planned intervals to provide information on whether the food safety management system conforms to the organization's own requirements for its food safety management system and the requirements of this standard. As per this clause, the organization is required to conduct internal audits at planned intervals to provide information on whether the food safety management system is effectively implemented and maintained. Coming to subclause 9.2.2. The subclause 9.2.2 states that the organization must plan, establish, implement and maintain audit programs including the frequency, methods, responsibilities, planning requirements, and reporting. Internal audits must take into consideration the importance of the processes concerned, changes in the food safety management system, and the results of monitoring, measurement, and previous audits. As per this subclause, organization is required to define the audit criteria and scope for each audit and also select competent auditors and conduct audits to ensure objectivity and the impartiality of the audit process. The subclause 9.2.2 states that an organization must ensure 
that the results of the audits are reported to the food safety team and relevant management. This sub clause says that the organization must retain the implementation of the audit program and the audit results as documented information as evidence and make the necessary corrections and take the necessary corrective actions within the agreed time frame. As per this clause, the organization must determine if the food safety management system meets the intent of the food safety policy and its objectives of the food safety management system. Follow-up activities by the organization are required to include the verification of the actions taken and the reporting of the verification results. Lastly, the subclause recommends under a note to refer the ISO 19011 for guidelines for auditing management systems. Let me explain the clause 9.3, management review. The subclause 9.3.1 general states that the top management shall review the organization's food safety management system at planned intervals to ensure its continuing suitability, adequacy, and effectiveness. The subclause 9.3.2 management review input specifies that the management review must consider the following the status of actions from previous management reviews, changes in external and internal issues that are relevant to the FSMS, including changes in the organization and its context, information on the performance and the effectiveness of the FSMS, including trends in result of system updating activities, monitoring and measurement results, analysis of the results of verification activities related to PRPs and the hazard control plan, non-conformities and corrective actions, internal and external audit results, inspections, example, regulatory, customer, the performance of external providers, the review of risks and opportunities and of the effectiveness of actions taken to address them and the extent to which objectives of the FSMS have been met, the adequacy of resources, any emergency situation, incident or withdrawal recall that occurred, relevant information obtained through external and internal communication including requests and complaints from interested parties and opportunities for continual improvement. Further, the subclause 9.3.2 states that the data must be presented in a manner that enables top management to relate the information to stated objectives of the food safety management system. Coming now to subclause 9.3.3 management review output. According to this subclause 9.3.3 of ISO 22000, the outputs of the management review is required to include decisions and actions related to continual improvement opportunities. The clause says that the management review output is required to compromise any need for updates and changes to the food safety management system including resource needs and revision of the food safety policy and objectives of the food safety management system. Lastly, covering the mandatory documentation requirements, the standard through subclause 9.3.3 specifies that the organization is required to retain documented information as evidence of the results of management reviews. Friends, we have now concluded the clause 9 performance evaluation of ISO 22000-2018. For more information about our institute and other training programs, you can contact us through email or phone. I sincerely thank you all for your interest and attention.